Well, we're going to look at Planeer easel solutions today. I've tried a bunch of them over the years. I have a favorite go-to that many of you have asked questions about. We'll take a look at that, and I've got something brand new for this year. I'm excited to try. Even Reese is excited about that one. All right, so what we have here in front of me is the representation of a journey. A journey of plein air easels. And I've told this story before, but since I have so many new subscribers and that story has been told a long time ago, plein air painting was new to me. Painting on location was new to me when I started this channel. And by new, I mean I had done it before, but it goes way back to school and I wasn't experienced in what I should take, what I was most comfortable with taking, and any experience that goes along with that. So as my channel grew, I tried things. I realized I needed something. I needed an easel. Now, there are lightweight ways of sketching just by holding your sketchbook or placing it on your lap on a drawing board, and I've tried those. It took me a while to really admit that what I prefer is working on an easel. I have an issue with my wrist going numb when I hold stuff for very long. I can do it, but I really prefer and am most comfortable when I'm working on an easel. So this actually was my first easel, and we'll talk about this last, because uh, there are modifications and other things I wanna talk about. And it's an option I keep coming back to and love it for its versatility and simplicity, but let's put that towards the end and I'll show you the other things I've tried leading up to that. And then we'll also look at something brand new that I'm gonna be trying this year. All right, so one of the first easels that I tried was the Etcher Satchel. Now, if you know anything about the Etcher Satchel, you know it's a lot more than just an easel. But since we're talking about easels, that's one of its really great primary functions. The mounting plate on the back here, which allows it to be mounted to an easel. As you can see, it's also a backpack. It's like a piece of, of luggage. I have a review on that. I'm not going to go through and review it. Suffice it to say, I love this. It's fantastic. It's, it's well constructed. A lot of options in here. I think perhaps its greatest strength is for the artist, like maybe a student or a traveling artist, that likes to carry a lot of supplies. A lot of different supplies. Maybe various types of papers and sketchbooks. Is this basically a carry-all? which makes it a little bulky, a little large, a little heavy. But if you're in a situation where you want to carry a lot and you want it all in sort of a compact studio that's practically like luggage, you just can't beat this. There's so many options to this. But Etcher just did a really good job with it. I have used it and I have loved it. I will use it again. And the great thing about Etcher is they've been successful with it. They came out with a smaller, lighter, less uh, option rich, version if you will and I'm, there's even a smaller version of this one this one is, does not convert to a backpack but it's got the same tripod mount on the back i've used them both in plein air situations another great satchel all right another good option that i tried is the gorilla painter Peshad box it's, it's a little bit uh out of the norm for let's say watercolor painters but since i do watercolor and gouache I thought, I, and I like the form factor, I thought it would be a great way to go. Also have a review of this, which I will link to below, and you can watch that. They are typically used by oil painters, but I think it works really well for watercolor. Uh, the strengths, again, similar to the Etcher Satchel, but uh, less options for including various art supplies. You're pretty much limited to a very specific kit. The advantage is everything is together in one package. So I find that really nice. I like the layout of the inside. I love the palette that you can get as an uh, option to go with it. It will also mount to a tripod as these others have. But again, a very specific type of easel. Probably something I will use again. But that all brings me to my go-to and what I keep coming back to. <laughs> Early on, I realized I needed an easel and I wanted to just make something very simple and versatile. All of the extra supplies, the palette, the brushes, the paints that could all be carried separately and I just wanted something that was like a desk basically a, a surface and a shelf I get the most questions about this maybe it's because I use it the most in my videos but I will link to the original 
video where I made this and it didn't look like this. Uh, this is modified and I'll explain those modifications. But it's just very versatile. And yes, I did include a tripod mount on the back. I have the choice of using anything from mounted watercolor paper to blocks to sketchbooks. Now the original uh, version that I made of this would not fit in a backpack. And that was the whole reason that I modified it to be like this. Essentially what I did was I cut down the sides, rounded it off. I added uh, these slots. It lightened a little, but that also would allow me to lash it to a really small pack that it might not fit into. However, with a normal backpack, this fits easily into the laptop pocket. And as I got to playing with it, I thought, well, I'm going to put something on there that folds out and this is what I use to clip my pallets to. Oh, fold out pallets. And I just clip them to the side. I'll use either a magnetic clip or a clip like this. And you can see I've used this in multiple videos. You really don't have to pay any attention to this. This is something I did for myself for video. This is mostly just to mount cameras to. This is really the easel. Again, there has been no change in the way this was constructed. All I did was cut it down. If you watched that original construction video. And then I added this. And this is just optional. This will hold a sketchbook and you can still clip your palette up here if this is not something that you want to add. Love this. I will continue to use this. This has proven itself for just being very versatile, flexible. I can throw it in a backpack, then I can gather whatever other supplies that I'm wanting to use at the time. But as I'm trying things, I thought I want to do one more thing and that's I want to see if there's an option for going just a little bit lighter weight. I've always wanted to try the James Gurney easel. Now, if you've watched James Gurney, you know what I'm talking about. And it's the one he uses in almost all of his videos. He has a video showing the supplies he used to make it. And if you want a detailed construction video, you can actually buy that. He has a link where you can buy and download that video uh, to keep. There are also many people on YouTube who have instructional videos of how they've made his version. I always thought uh, I would eventually try to make one and just see how it worked. But then one day I was on Etsy and I thought, let's just see. I had a patron ask me if I knew of anybody that made them. And I thought, well, let's find out. I went on to Etsy and sure enough, there's a ton of them. People making the James Gurney easel and selling them. I think I probably looked at every one, <laughs> compared prices, and I found one that I liked and I decided to just go ahead and buy it. So I can't really give you a review on this yet. Um, I haven't actually tried it, but uh, this was my favorite of everything I saw on Etsy. This is made by an artist by the name of Taylor Seamount. And she has just done a really good job of designing this. Now there are some differences with James Gurney's design. He uses plywood. This is bamboo, very lightweight. And that was one of the things, uh, this is actually gonna fit in a really small pack if I wanted to. Uh, I love these recessed magnets. I just thought those were a really great touch and I can't wait to use this. Um, it has the tripod mount on the back and I'm not gonna take it off now, but I have the detachable mount already added to this and I just keep it on there. And that goes to the tripod I usually use when I'm in the field. And impressed with this design and we'll be reporting more as I use it in plein air. One of the unique differences of this is it uses uh, hinges that you can adjust the tension of and instead of mounting here on your tripod it mounts on the top part and it's designed so that your sketchbook attaches up here. So your setup in the field may go something like this. Again if you want to see how these are used uh, just look at basically any one of James Gurney's plein air videos and you can see. I really am excited about this option. I have found as I have been exploring my journey in plein air that I prefer working in sketchbooks, usually sketchbooks about this size. So this is probably going to be an often used solution for me. If I want to work bigger, I want to work in bigger sketchbooks, larger palettes, blocks maybe, uh, I can still use this option. So that's where I am. That's uh, been my experience with plein air easel so far and it's just great that we have so many options out there. And I love that these two options here, my original one and then this one, you can actually make yourself. There's a lot of people out there that would show you the materials or versions of it that you can make. But if you want to buy one, so far this is my favorite. 
So I will have a link to Taylor Seamount's Etsy store if you want to take a look at this one. And I look forward to giving you further news about it as we use it. Thanks everybody. Short one this week. Hope this gave you something to think about. Let me know if you already do a lot of plein air and you have easels that are just perfect for what you want. Let me know what you use, what you think about it, and why. Why it's your favorite. Put that down in the comments. All right, everybody, thanks. Thank you, patrons, for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.